Michael. I'm meteorologist Mark Elliott here in Cordell, Georgia. When it came through this area, it was still a Category 1 hurricane. It came into Georgia as a major hurricane, right? It, it, it went all the way through the Florida Panhandle, made it into Georgia as a Cat 3 still. Uh, I, I believe that is the first major hurricane in the state of Georgia since roughly the 1890s. It's been a long time. Now, in Cordell, a Category 1 hurricane certainly had some real impacts. Uh, the power is out through much of the area. I have been watching off to my left side, way off in the distance. I see the blue flashing lights of some uh, emergency crews. Looks like there's some police cars going by. Uh, and so they are still on the roads. They're probably surveying uh, the damage right now. That said, we continue to uh, deal with the power outage issues. There's about 10,000 outages locally, but 240-something thousand through the state of Georgia. Augusta and Savannah, you are still in that watch for a while longer. But this watch in South Carolina, pretty much the entire state except for Greenville, Columbia, Charleston, you are in that watch until 7 o'clock in the morning. So you could have overnight tornadoes. Make sure that you've got something that will wake you up, a NOAA weather radio or an app on your phone that uh, will play a loud alarm to wake you up if you need to get to your safe place. Still a lot of rain falling from Michael. Look at all the rain continuing to push toward the uh, eastern portion of Georgia now, but Atlanta is still just getting pounded with rainfall, and flood warnings are up particularly on the west side, as we're seeing the possibility of water over roadways there. Here's where the rain has been. Cordial there, where Mark Elliott is, still under that flash flood warning due to the heavy rain that came through earlier. And the winds have died down now there around Cordial, but we still have wind gusts around Macon to 29 miles per hour. We still have wind gusts on the increase around Athens to 30 miles per hour. Earlier, there was a 36 mile per hour gust there at uh, the stadium at uh, University of Georgia. Augusta seeing winds up to 31 miles per hour as well, but spotty reports coming in of wind gusts above 60 miles per hour there in the central part of the state. So once again, the rain tapering off in the area that has just been pounded with rainfall there in southwestern uh, portions of uh, Georgia. Look at this, five to eight inches of rainfall there, and uh, it's no wonder. But look, as much as a foot in some areas there of the panhandle of Florida, still going to have a lot of damage to clean up there as we get through the next several days. Now here's what we can expect in terms of flooding. Look at this area here in yellow, likely flooding from rain coming down in saturated ground, especially in North and South Carolina. So as we watch, Michael, as a tropical storm move north, northeast, just east of Charlotte, we'll see some heavier rainfall and some localized flooding. So we got tropical storm warnings from about Raleigh and just east of Charlotte and points east and even flood watches. So the flood watch means that flooding is possible. But if we continue to see this forward speed, pick up and if it continues to move faster we may see less flooding than may be expected right now but still a general three to five inch rain from south carolina and central north carolina up through parts of southwest virginia in and around the edges here maybe a general one to three inches so around Asheville, one to three inches and even to the outer banks savannah not much rain at all but columbia charlotte even around sumter in south carolina raleigh winston-salem all expecting about three to five inches of rainfall and once again, some locally higher totals are possible. Now, let's take a look what the model thinks is going to be happening. Right now, this is a forecast of what the radar may look like as we go through the early morning hours. So notice, right in the heart for people getting out to school and to work, in Charlotte, we start to see the rain come down in the heaviest part of Michael, starting to impact you through the mid-morning and late-morning hours. Back to just after noon Central Time, when we had a landfall of Hurricane Michael. That landfall occurred about 12.30 p.m. Central Time as a Category 4 hurricane, high-end Category 4, 155 mile per hour winds and a central pressure of 919 millibars. 919. Well, just how deep is that area of low pressure? How low is that pressure? Well, it was lower than Katrina, lower than Andrew only surpassed by Hurricane Camille in 1969 and the Labor Day hurricane in 1935. Michael, the third most intense hurricane to make landfall on record in the United States. Look at this enhanced satellite and that 
that just that eye is so symmetrical as it moves up over Mexico Beach as it made landfall there about 12:30 and then continued as a hurricane all the way up into Georgia. As a matter of fact, it only became uh, a transition from a hurricane to a tropical storm late into the night on Wednesday, early on into Thursday morning, and now we have a tropical storm that continues to put down tons of rain and lots of uh, tropical storm force winds. There's the visible satellite, and I, and I, I just love the, the high-resolution satellites that we have now, that we can see right down into the ocean. It's just amazing. You can see right through it, down into, through that eye, down into the Gulf of Mexico, as the eye made landfall there near Mexico Beach earlier today. The winds were a problem, and they continue to be a problem, not as much of a problem as they were here at Tendall Air Force Base with a 129 mile per hour wind gust. We had uh, Mariana Inland with 102 mile per hour wind gust, Cottondale at 89, even Dothan, Alabama, well inland at 61. But look at Donaldsville, Georgia, 115-mile-per-hour uh, mi wind gust well inland here away from the shoreline. Now we've got Tropical Storm Michael moving toward the northeast at 20 miles per hour, moving into South Carolina. The rain is on the increase there. The winds are going to be on the increase there as well. And winds of 60 miles per hour is what we have seen there in central Georgia. Wind gusts above that just uh, after midnight there around uh, the town of Eastman in Dodge County. Numerous trees down throughout much of Georgia. And that's what we could see as this tropical storm continues to move to the northeast through South Carolina on into North Carolina. And of course, very heavy rainfall accompanying that as well. We'll continue to see it push offshore as we head toward the weekend and probably gaining a little bit of strength as it moves out over the open waters of the Atlantic. But not until after it has already done a number on the Carolinas. So we have tropical storm warnings still up for much of Georgia, but also most of South Carolina and the eastern half of North Carolina as well. Those tropical storm force winds could bring down trees and could cause numerous power outages. We're continuing to see that around portions of Georgia as numerous trees are down and will be down until the crews can get out there and fix them. Webster County, Georgia, for instance, all county roads, we are told, are blocked by trees down and there's some damage to homes as well. Uh, Houston County has been hard hit with trees down and we could see that repeated in the Carolinas as we get into the next several hours and on to your Thursday. So that and even around Atlanta, so this means occasionally the winds may get a little bit stronger. Same thing around Columbia and Raleigh through the early morning hours, about 20 to 25 miles per hour. But no, as we watch the center of Michael get a little closer into South Carolina, some of those gusts could get 40 to 50 miles per hour. So that is tropical storm force. Even around Charleston's 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts, and the winds will continue to gust almost to tropical storm force early in the morning hours around Macon. But back down as we go through the early afternoon on Thursday, in Atlanta and in Macon, but still occasionally to 30 miles per hour, 30 to 35 here in Columbia and Raleigh as Michael starts moving on off toward the north and east and weaken just a bit to a 40 to 45 mile per hour tropical storm. And then as we go through the night on Thursday, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. So now we're staying in tropical storm force with some of those winds in Raleigh. Uh, Charleston winds back off Jacksonville and down around Tallahassee. Still some gusty winds coming in. You've got to realize, too, there is some cooler air coming in with a front, so uh, that front may actually kick up just a bit of a breeze. I had tornado warnings all night, and this is moving toward the north right now. This is racing toward the north at a speed of about 55 miles per hour. And uh, you can see the rotation right there. So it's on the southern end of the uh, of the tornado warn area, moving toward the north now. So all these areas here, Highway 601 up toward Eastover, you need to be on your guard here and get to your safe place. Yeah, and that's just uh, one of the aspects we've seen during uh, the Wednesday night now into Thursday morning. Uh, this heavy rain, Nick, um, really is uh, kind of a surprise. I, I wasn't expecting to see this much rain in Atlanta, but we've had almost four inches. Uh, even on the northwest side, we've seen some heavy rain still some... A tornado warning has been issued for our area on the tip off. Yeah, and fo folks getting up early and getting ready to head into work, you need to be on your guard because... This Evacuated are probably wondering uh, what exactly is happening. We do have a curfew in place for some parts of the Florida Panhandle. Just too much debris is still out there on the roads and, of course, the power outages. So we've got still uh, still problems Panhandle.
Here's the last 24 hours as it made landfall yesterday, 12.30 Central Time, near Mexico Beach, and then working its way into southern Georgia, still holding as a major hurricane at this point. So the structure was still very much intact. We have seen the winds decline a little bit, but it's still a tropical storm even at this hour. Across the Carolinas, we are still going to be talking about the wind and the rain. In terms of power outages, southern Georgia especially hit hard, and right here in the Florida Panhandle, uh, we have thousands of customers without power at this time. And you can see on the national map, we're over 808,000, the majority coming in from Georgia, Florida, and yes, even Alabama with more than 60,000 customers without power. Uh, so this is still gonna be an ongoing thing because the winds are still pretty strong and gusty, especially on the eastern side of our circulation, which is making its way out of Georgia into South Carolina. So tropical storm warnings are still in place for this area, shaded in the red. We have that onshore wind as well. That's going to be affecting us across the outer banks of North Carolina, where we actually do have the possibility of a storm surge anywhere from two to four feet. So there's the rain bands. You can see the yellow, the orange. That's your heavier stuff just on the eastern side of the center, just about to cross into South Carolina. And within those rain bands, that's where you've got the higher wind gusts. So Columbia gusting at times over 40 miles per hour. Charleston, onshore wind for you guys. You have winds gusting over 40. Vidalia, Atlanta, still talking winds gusting around 30 miles per hour. And that's going to make some trees come down, unfortunately, or at the very least, big branches that could also take down some power lines. So here's a look at our wind forecast. We're going to follow the center as it works its way through the Carolinas and then eventually into southeastern Virginia, taking with it all that moisture. So while you've got the wind, you've got the very heavy rain that's going to be coming down. Still a threat for tornadoes, by the way. That cannot be ruled out. D.C. getting in on some of those stronger winds overnight into early tomorrow morning. All right, we want to walk you through some of the more dramatic images that were generated by Hurricane Michael. <laughs> this time is a tropical storm. It has weakened. That is the good news. And by the way, it is hauling to the northeast at 21 miles per hour, and we're seeing the worst of the weather, definitely to the east of our center, which is now crossing out of Georgia into South Carolina. We still have a tornado threat, and we still have a flood threat as well. In fact, we have ongoing flash flood warnings in effect for Columbia, South Carolina. We're gusting over 40. Atlanta on the back side of all this, we have more of a northwest flow gusting close to 30 miles per hour, and even that kind of wind can cause some problems, at least with big branches coming down. But watch for trees to come down, susceptible, vulnerable, especially in the wake of Florence from a month ago. We do have flash flood warnings in effect for the upstate of South Carolina. More than 800,000 people just in the Greenville-Spartanburg area. And we'll track this rain moving north as we go through the day. A month ago when we saw two to three feet of rain. So look at this. All these counties under flash flood warnings. This is in the higher terrain, the high country of western North Carolina, including Avery County. Um, mudslides could be an issue as well. This We, we get that enhanced lift with the orographic lift, the mountains enhancing that rainfall. And you can see Greenville, Spartanburg, also under a flash flood warning. And within that warning alone, we're talking about more than 800,000 people involved in that flash flood warning. So take it seriously. Uh, turn around, don't drown. There could be some road closures as a result. Plus, you've got the winds that are blowing pretty strong still between in Columbia, Charleston, winds gusting better than 40 miles per hour, and that's enough to possibly down some trees, especially in this vulnerable area from Florence of last month. All right, back to Steph in Panama City. It's continuing to move toward the east, and it's in the clear air on the north and east side of where that circulation is going to go. That's where we're going to see the threat for tornadoes increase during the next few hours. This tornado watch is new. It has now been issued until 9 o'clock tonight. It includes parts of southern Virginia, and also going to much of eastern North Carolina, including Raleigh, Durham, all the way Fayetteville, Wilmington, Hatteras, everywhere in between, as far north as Richmond and Norfolk as well. So the tornado threat will exist today for a long ways yet to come as overall the circulation and the instability and the wind shear that accompanies it, it will move in that general direction. Right now, the winds associated with the tropical system are not very strong anymore. Gusting to 25 at Columbia, 39. We will see from time to time gusts of 40 to 50 throughout these areas of heavier rain this afternoon. But that won't be, I don't think, the biggest threat, and those overall will begin to weaken during the afternoon. It will be the potential for tornadoes later on in the day. This is where the circulation is going, moving across parts of, say, North Carolina and Virginia, moving offshore by 8 or 9 o'clock tonight. So it's going to be a quick here, guys. Some gusty winds, if nothing else, and certainly some heavy rain.